Hello, everybody. This is Gerald Salenti, and it's Thursday, June 13th. If it was Friday, it'd be Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th. Oh, oh, Black Friday. No, that's another day. Yeah, Friday the 13th. That's a bad day, Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th, March 2020. That's when Trump called the state of emergency to fight the COVID war. Fighting the COVID war. We're fighting the COVID Every little fucking scumbag prick, and I can't say the other word, called it a war. One after another. That little clown boy, Boris Johnson, that the best cartoonist in the world, the little shit scumbag prick from the UK, the F-U-C-K, yeah, that little fucking clown. Every one of them called it a war. Yep. These are the scumbags running and ruining our lives. Little pieces of shit that throw at their crap that the masses swallow. Anyway, on to the markets. Yep, there they are. You got it? Check this one out. USSA, United Soviet States of America, freedom, fuck you. Political parasites in charge. If you don't believe what we're shoving down your throat, you believe in misinformation, which I call sexist calling it misinformation. Why? That's degrading to this. We should call it gender misinformation or trans information. Ah, fuck off. Anyway, the markets. Dow is down a bit. S&P keeps going higher. Yep. Numbers came in for the inflation numbers are a little lower than they thought, but gold, whew, gold's down 2,304 bucks. Remember, it was over 100 bucks more than that. So the bet's now on the street that the Fed is not going to lower rates. I had bet the Fed would lower rates because we're going into dragflation, flat economy, and rising inflation. They're going to pump it up before the election. But now what I'm seeing is that they want to bring down inflation because they're going to say the economy is strong by the Job numbers, et cetera, et cetera. And the other thing is, will Trump be running against Biden? Meaning, will Biden be there? Clayton Morris, redacted. You got to check this cat out, man. He knows his stuff. I knew him when he was on Fox. Great show. And he just came out with a whole lot of information that Biden might not be running. But again, it's a toss-up because, as I say, when all else fails, they take you to war, and the wars are heating up. So what else do we got? The International Energy Agency says that they expect oil glut forecast by the end of 2020s. Okay, six years away. <laughs> if the Israel war keeps heating up and all of this shit, the Ukraine war keeps heating up, you're going to see oil prices boom to Brent crude being over $130 a barrel. And the EV failures are happening. Yeah, they're big in China. They're failing in the United States. They're not doing what they said they could do. And they, again, once upon a time, there was a man by the name of Dwight D. Eisenhower. And I know people say, oh, I hate Eisenhower because of this, this. And I know everybody's pulled their shit, but not me. I've been perfect all my life. You know, what, what are you kidding? Anyway. Eisenhower's farewell address, or one of his addresses, he says that the military-industrial complex is robbing the nation of the genius of the scientists, sweat of the labors, and the future of the children. 100% right. Five-star general, supreme commander of the Allied forces during World War II and two-term president. I'm mentioning this because you could imagine, rather than spending hundreds, hundreds of trillions of dollars since the end of World War II, to the military industrial complex and wars, if that went into the genius of the scientists, we'd have energy, clean, we'd be living at the height. But no, we only got to fight wars that little cocksuckers keep losing. Little fucking arrogant pricks. How about that little scumbag betrayed us, huh? Oh, he's working for a KKR, is it KKK? Oh, yeah, look at the money they're paying him. Yeah, the Afghan troop surge, yeah. Blimpo, 
Blimpo Lloyd Austin killed people in Iraq and Afghanistan, lost both wars, huh? Anyway, so going on, EU to impose heavy tariffs on Chinese EVs. You know, and it goes on. China EV stocks decline amid tariff concerns. Can China export machine keep running without the West? Sharp rise in levies prompts fear of reprisals by President Xi. Yeah, payback's a bitch. Now that Europe has announced tariffs on China-made electric cars, the continent is bracing to see if the other shoe drops. Okay. As much as I can't stand Trump, when he came out about tariffs and putting more of them on China, boy, did they attack him. But hey, bullshit Biden's doing it. It's okay. And by the way, if I was president, I would put the tariffs back on that were there before they brought China into the World Trade Organization and before they began to change them in the 1970s. And I bring manufacturing back to America and make it a self-sustaining economy. And that's what China is doing. They're 1.4 billion people. What is the United States? 30, 332 million? They don't need America. They're increasing their business in Asia, in, in developing nations, South, South America. Yeah, they want to keep doing business here. But they're becoming more self-sustaining. Made in China. Same thing with Russia. Made in Russia. Look at the shit that, that everybody swallowed coming out of the mouth of bullshit Biden. These sanctions we're putting on Russia, Putin's going to pay the price. No, they didn't. They became more self-sustaining. So all those countries, that companies that left Russia, the Starbucks and all the other ones that ran out, the Russians took over. America has all of the human and natural resources to be self-sustaining, and so does Russia and China. I'm an American. America first, America only. I believe in the founding fathers. And I've read George Washington's farewell address to not become involved in any foreign entanglements. What do you think the Civil War started on? It was about trade between... The South was selling more crap overseas than the North because they were selling it cheaper. It was all bullshit about slavery. It was unionization. Anyway, so there's you going on in China. And we're saying that the more sanctions they put on China, the worse it's going to hurt companies that export product to China. They're not going to want to buy them anymore. And you got a huge market over there. But again, well, you need a little bit of uh, rose, boy, on this hot day. A salute. Chin chin, 100 years. Bloomberg, bus company coach. USA, owner of the mega bus brand and commuter bus line connecting New York and New Jersey, file for bankruptcy. Private equity firm Variant Equity Advisors purchased Coach USA from British bus company Stagecoach Group in April 2019. Yeah, a couple of months before the COVID war. Good shot, man. These private equity groups, these fucking scumbag pricks, private equity groups, venture capitalists, hedge funds. Oh, yeah. Look at the cover of your trends journal a couple of days ago. Yep. You got it? The serfs of the robber barons 2.0. And down below it, it says hedge funds, private equity groups, and venture capitalists. So, ridership has partially recovered 
but last year was only about 45% of pre-pandemic levels. Wasn't a fucking pandemic. They called it a pandemic. The World Horror Organization, W or the World Health Organization, the World Fucking Horror Organization called it a pandemic on March 11th when the grand total of 4,215 people died in 2020 at 8 billion. It was a lockdown by scumbags. Oh, and going back to scumbags, the scumbag that they're going to run to take Biden's place would probably be Gatso and Gavin, the little arrogant fucking prick from California, first one to lock down everything. I am a daddy's boy. Look at me. Look how arrogant I am. My daddy worked for the Getty gang. He was a lawyer. I'm a piece of shit, and I'll tell you what to do. Get back in your house while I dine at the French Laundry for $400 a plate. Yeah, that's scumbag. So going back, we're mentioning this bank, this 45% of the traffic is down. Office occupancy rate in America's biggest cities, according to Castle Systems, 50%. All the businesses that depended on commuters going out of business, all right? Capisce? And now no one's talking about the office building bust and the banks go bust. But you can get it in your trends journal. We're giving you it. Nobody, nobody in the world is giving you. For the grand total of $2.56 a week. So support us because we're supporting you. And I'm saying this because the more subscribers we have, the more we could do in the name of life, liberty, pursuit of happiness, and freedom, peace, and justice. And don't forget the rally. Peace and freedom rally coming up. September 28th. In the four corners of freedom, right up here in Kingston, New York, where the seeds of democracy were sown. Charles, Charles, John, and Crown Street. Scott Ritter, Judge Napolitano, and others. We'll keep, keep giving you the names. We keep getting them. And we're going to have a, it's just, we want a million person march. We have to stop these wars. They're ramping up the war. More 15s going into Ukraine. They're crazy fucking pricks. And I can't say the other word that want more war. Little fucking war whores. We're do, I'm doing everything I can. I'm a warrior for the Prince of Peace. I'm a fighter. I'm a fighter. I attack the attacker. And we're getting attacked. I want a peaceful rally. Mercer snaps up UK pension specialists. Again, the bigs are getting bigger, the scumbag private equity groups. Anyway, restrictions on Moscow exchange and Russia banks, fate of the ruble, key takeaways from new major US sanctions. The US government announced a new wave of sanctions against Russia on Tuesday targeting its energy, metals, and mining industries. Going on and on and on, right? So now, Medvedev, the former president, West has declared, quote, war without rules on Russia, okay? This thing is heating up big time. You will have, the, we'll have more of it in the Trends Journal, but the facts are right there. He goes on to say, Moscow should use every opportunity to, quote, inflict maximum damage on Western nations that have declared, quote, a war without rules on Russia. Are they afraid that we would transfer our arms to the enemies of the Western world? We should send every kind of weapon except nuclear for now. And there afraid of anarchy and crime waves in large cities, we should help disrupt the municipal authorities. Moscow should clitorate their energy infrastructure, industry, transport, banking, and social services, instill fear over an imminent collapse of all critical infrastructure, he said. All right. He's the deputy chair of the Russian Security Council. It keeps going on. World War III has begun. 
There's going to be a false flag event like the, like the Pearl Harbor kind of thing, like the 9-11, when a little ballless little prick with a dick this big, little Georgie Bush, we're going to get that guy on Osama Bin Laden, get her alive. I'm a daddy's boy, born on third base, 28 a home run. I'm a little stupid fucking shit. And 90% of the American people swallowed it. 90%. Look up the facts. Yeah. There's going to be a false flag event. American newsrooms look across the pond for leaders. This is a front page story, or, or, or not a front page, a business front page story in the New York Times on Monday. Look up what, yeah, British journalists lead key American newsrooms. Little fucking British pricks. Little scumbags. From the country that we, the people, fought against in the American Revolution are now the top heads of what they call journalists. Oh, the sun never sets on the British Empire. We slaughter people all over the world. Oh, yeah. And don't forget, His Majesty's government in the Balfour Declaration declared that the land in Palestine is going to the Jewish people. Yo, they're scumbags, yeah. You ready for this? U.S. newsrooms are in trouble. Are the British journalists the answer? Yep. Another article. Newspaper industry. People are not reading his stuff. Will Lewis bluntly told a room of American journalists on Monday as the British media executive announced the overhaul of the Washington Post newsroom just months before a pivotal election. Yep. You got it? That's why you subscribe to the Trends Journal. We are free. Nobody, the Washington Post lost $77 million last year for publishing shit because they're little low-life prostitutes, little media whores that get paid to put out by their corporate pimps and their government whore masters. Nobody is giving you what we're giving you. Nowhere, anywhere. So, floating aid pier off Gaza is hobbled by rough seas. Isn't that nice language from the Wall Street Journal? Another fucking failure by the scumbag military who can't want, hasn't won a war since World War II, wastes about $250 million of our money to build a bullshit thing that took over three fucking months that did nothing that we said would be a failure in the Trends Journal when they announced it. You know how we knew? Because they're losers. By their deeds, you shall know them. Gaza ceasefire plan in balance. As U.S. says, Hamas proposed changes. You know what that is from BBC? Warning, warning, bullshit alert. BBC bullshit and Western media bullshit. Because Hamas has been saying that they never changed the deal. Israel never agreed to it. This guy, a senior Hamas official, said on June 12th, yesterday, speaking on Al Arabi TV, that Blinken was part of the problem, not the solution in Gaza. Is everything that we presented, we affirmed our commitment to what was presented on May 5th to the mediators, and we did not talk about any new ideas or proposals. He reiterated that Hamas stance that it was Israel that was rejecting proposals and accused the U.S. administration of going along with his close ally, quote, to invade any commitment. He also, Hamdan, also demanded guarantees to mediators to ensure that Israel does, quote, 
not evade its responsibilities. Then you have another article by BBC. Hamas rebuffs Blinken blame for elusive ceasefire. Hamas is pushed back after being criticized by U.S. Secretary of State. Bullshit Blinken. What do you mean, bullshit Blinken? My daddy was the ambassador to Hungary. My uncle was the ambassador to Belgium. I went to Dalton. I went to Harvard. I'm a member of the club. I'm a little cocksucker that's been sucking off the public tit since the early 90s. Who the fuck are you to tell me what to do? Yep. Gaza sees fire, plan, and balance as U.S. says Hamas proposed changes. Total lie. Total lie. Total lie. And now, this just came out from the Times of Israel. Negotiations stuck on Hamas demand for Israel upfront commitment to a permanent truce. Why, how dare they want a permanent truce? Don't you remember the last deal they did when they brought the hostages, gave them like a, over a hundred? And as soon as the deal was over in a couple of days, Israel's destroyed the fucking place, killed about 40,000 people. Wounded about almost 100,000, destroyed Gaza. Why would they want a permanent ceasefire? How dare they? What else we got? Ah, 215 rockets fired at North after IDF killing the most senior Hezbollah officer yet. Hezbollah launched some 215 rockets and several major missiles, more missiles and drones at northern Israel on Wednesday in what it said was a response to the killing of a senior commander, and they call it the terror group, Hamas, uh, Hezbollah. They're not a terror group. These are the people that threw out Israel after they invaded Lebanon. But that's the language that they use that we don't use. If the enemy is screaming and moaning about what had happened in northern Palestine, let him prepare himself to cry and wail. This is the, uh, say, Talib Abdullah at a funeral procession in Beirut. Yep. We said this was going to happen as Israel keeps getting more and more condemned for their genocidal war. They're going to keep ramping it up. When all else fails, they take you to war. We said they're going to keep ramping it up. We said they're going to keep ramping it up, and they're ramping it up. Minister Gantz, National Unity Party, Benny Gantz, Benny, Benny bullshit, said today that if Hezbollah does not stop attacking Israel, quote, Lebanon should burn. So in other words, kill all the people in Lebanon. Hey, Benny Gantz said so. How dare Hezbollah attack Israel after Israel has killed over a hundred people involved with Hezbollah since the war began following Hamas October 7th attack. Yep. But those are only facts and they don't give them to you. Hezbollah, I was wrong. Hezbollah has named 342 members who have been killed by Israel during the ongoing scrimmages. Israel can kill who they want. They're the chosen people. Like America. All right. World War III has begun. Get it in your head. Get it in your head. We need a million people march to stop this. September 28th, the Four Corners of Freedom, John and Crown Street. More information will be coming out. Judge Napolitano, Scott Ritter of Wall Merity committed. Yep. And what else do we have here? Yeah, a lot more. <laughs> here, Chiquita Libel 
held liable for killing during war in Colombia. I'm Chiquita Banana, and I come to say I'll kill anybody in any way. I want to steal your land and plant for free, so go and kill everybody for me. Yeah, that's Chiquita. This shit's been going on. Read, read Wars a Racket. Read that book. It's, it's true. I got it right here. By Smedley Butler. Talks about it. That every one of these fucking wars are for the rich. <sighs> Members of Congress take jobs paying as much as $4 million. Who's that? Politico. Yep. The revolving door in Washington is perhaps the most pernicious form of corruption. It is illegal. I don't know who wrote this, actually. It is illegal for incumbents to receive direct financial rewards from the interest groups that lobby them daily. But financial rewards are often delayed until retirement. Yep. It's all right here. Former Representative Mike Rogers, $987,000. Yeah. One after another. One after another. It's a crime syndicate that people call a government. So check out the interview I did yesterday with Judge Napolitano. Very important. Salenti and the Judge. It's right here on the, on the YouTube channel. And hit that, that button there, you know, to subscribe button so you could get, we get more viewers. Because there's going to be a time. We're getting shadow banned as it is. Put that button up there if you can. There we go. All right. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you soon.